Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll demonstrate how to perform multi-GPU supervised fine-tuning for large language models using a Jupyter Notebook. As you see here, I'm utilizing Kaggle, a platform dedicated to data science computations that conveniently provides users with access to free GPUs. For instance, my current setup includes two NVIDIA T4 GPUs. Within this brief code snippet, you'll observe our objective, fine-tuning a large language model. The purpose is enabling the model to acquire new knowledge or skills from a dataset. This particular dataset focuses on multitask African language processing, encompassing sentiment analysis, natural language inference, and machine translation. For further details, please refer to my previous video. The fine-tuning workflow itself is quite straightforward. First, we prepare our dataset, which is in a hugging face compatible format. Next, we load the base model. This is the original language model that we intend to adapt using our specific dataset for fine-tuning. Subsequently, we configure the trainer parameters and initiate the training phase. It's a very direct process. Now, let's execute the code. Up here, you'll notice the resource profiling, displaying the utilization for the CPU and both GPUs. Currently, there's noticeable CPU activity as we are loading the dataset and the model checkpoints. Once the data and model are loaded and training commences, we expect to observe GPU activity. Indeed, right here, we can now see activity on the GPUs. This graph shows the GPU utilization percentage, and this one displays the GPU memory consumption. An important observation to make at this point is regarding the utilization pattern. Observe the GPU utilization across the two units, it's somewhat uneven. Noticeably, one GPU shows utilization below 50%, while the other operates at a higher rate. This imbalance occurs because, by default, the Hugging Face Supervised Fine Tuning, SFT, trainer employs the data parallel strategy for multi-GPU operations. Data Parallel, DP, is a recognized strategy within PyTorch for multi-GPU training environments, as illustrated conceptually. Fundamentally, when using multiple GPUs, GPU assumes the role of the main processor. During every training step, it aggregates gradients computed by the other worker GPUs and subsequently broadcasts the updated model parameters back out. You can visualize how this intensive communication focused on GPU becomes a performance bottleneck, resulting in the reduced GPU utilization we noticed earlier for GPU zero. This inherent bottleneck represents a significant downside of the data parallel, DP, mode. In contrast, an optimized approach exists called distributed data parallel, DDP. The fundamental distinction with DDP is the absence of a designated main GPU. Instead, all participating GPUs operate as peers and share the workload more evenly. Essentially, at the conclusion of each backward pass, DDP performs an all-reduce operation. This involves collectively gathering and averaging the gradients calculated across all peer GPUs. Following this synchronization, since every GPU maintains its own independent copy of the model's weights, each can locally apply the computed gradient updates to its weights. Consequently, DDP significantly reduces communication overhead compared to the DP approach. Now, let's proceed to implement distributed data parallel. Modifying our SFT trainer code for DDP is remarkably simple. First, 
let's review the performance of our current data parallel version. As you can observe, the estimated completion time is roughly 10 minutes. Yes, approximately 10 minutes total runtime. This translates to each iteration requiring slightly over two seconds, or about zero. Four iterations per second for the DP setup. Now, let's evaluate DDP's performance. We'll begin by canceling the current execution. Modifying the existing code to switch from DP to DDP is quite straightforward. The initial step involves restructuring our code. We need to encapsulate the entire training logic within a dedicated function, like so. The second necessary modification concerns device mapping for DDP. We must ensure the model checkpoints are correctly assigned to each GPU within its corresponding independent process during loading. Therefore, we must adjust the device map parameter. To achieve this, we'll utilize the Accelerate library, another valuable tool from Hugging Face. Specifically, we need to import the partial state class from Accelerate. This class will help manage the state across different distributed processes, including device placement. Next, we construct the device string required for the mapping. This is obtained using partial state, specifically accessing its process index attribute to get the correct device ID. Here, instead of using device map equals auto, we will provide a dictionary where the key is an empty string and the value is our dynamically generated device string. Right, this constitutes the primary modification needed within the model loading section, replacing device map equals auto with our specific device dictionary. That essentially covers the changes required inside the training function itself. However, to actually initiate the distributed training process, we now need to employ the notebook launcher from Accelerate. Essentially, the process involves importing Notebook Launcher directly from the Accelerate library. We can then initiate the multi-process training execution simply by calling this launcher instance, supplying our previously defined training function, train function, as the primary argument to be executed across the processes. Since our training function currently accepts no input arguments, we pass an empty argument list to the launcher. We specify that we have two GPUs available, meaning we require two distinct processes, num processes equals two. Additionally, it's often good practice to specify a unique communication port, for instance, using a value like 6006. Now, let's try executing these changes. We run the cell defining the launcher setup, followed by the cell invoking the launcher itself. Okay, we've encountered an error. The message indicates an unexpected keyword argument was received. Ah, it seems I likely misspelled, num processes. Yes, let's correct that. Okay, attempting again. Another error appears, let's examine it. Right, the error message essentially confirms that we must restart the notebook kernel before proceeding. Okay, let's perform the restart. We will do a factory reset. After the reset, we can rerun the notebook using run all. Good, it looks like it's working correctly now, launching the training successfully on the two designated GPUs. Now, we'll wait momentarily for the model waits to finish loading onto the devices. Once loaded, we can examine the GPU utilization metrics again. As is evident here, both GPUs are now demonstrating significantly high utilization levels, 
with each operating at nearly 100% capacity during the training steps. Furthermore, let's compare the estimated training time. Previously, with data parallel, the projection was around 10 minutes. However, with distributed data parallel active, the estimate has reduced to approximately six minutes. This represents a considerable speed improvement over the default DP method. Okay, that covers the main points for this demonstration. I will share this notebook for your reference. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe. Bye.